good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, for our um, monthly COA board meeting of uh, May 1st, 2023. Has everyone had a chance to go over the minutes, either at home through their email or a look at them over here? Pat has agreed to continue on, though, 
with the AARP board and, and other um, interests here at the center. I thank you for your service. So I guess the first thing, Mr. Chair, if you would be agreeable, is to, um, and Pat, we can't change your mind? No, thanks. Um, we'll, have a, we'll have a special meeting with the treasurer after, um, so we wouldn't have to accept your resignation. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept the resignation of uh, uh, Pat Jandris as being a member of the uh, board from the representative of AARP, which has been abolished? I'll make a motion to accept your Second. Second. So I know, so Terry's going to bring up a, a point of order as to whether or not an associate member can make a motion. Um, what we typically have said, if the, if the vote is not contentious, that an associate board member can be part of that. But just for, I guess for formal purposes, um, Stan, would you withdraw your motion? And, uh, yeah, I'll withdraw the motion. Thank you. So we're still looking for a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to accept Ad's resignation. Reluctantly. Okay, any other discussion on it? Okay, can I have a show of hands if all those approve? Any opposed? All right, um, so I also want to bring up um, kind of a, a resignation by by kind of a de facto resignation by, by the fact that um, she hasn't been here since September of 21. So Evelyn Lynn McCarthy um, hasn't come to a board meeting. We've tried to send correspondence and we've gotten the correspondence back. We tried calling, the phone number's been disconnected, although I understand she's still residing in this address. Um, many attempts to contact her haven't, um, haven't been fruitful and the fact that she hasn't been here in two years. Typically, our bylaws say after three meetings, um, we would uh, accept for extenuating circumstances, like a medical leave of absence or something like that. So I would ask Mr. Chair uh, formally to ask this board to consider, um, um, I don't know, accepting by, by de facto um, absence the resignation of Lynn McCarthy. Okay, so uh, all in favor of uh, accepting the de facto resignation of Mrs. McCarthy on the so, motion, motion and a second. Okay. Any formal discussion? So a uh, motion was made by uh, Terry, seconded by um, our illustrious Golden Age uh, President, Gloria Tucker. Any discussion on it? Any, okay, all in favor? All right. Aye. All opposed? No, okay. Maybe we can vote. And then the last thing in your board package, we do have two new associate board member applications. Um, Barbara LeBlanc, longtime garden resident. Um, she was a teacher at Water, Water Street? Water Street. Yeah, she's not college. Yeah. Um, she's a, a member of uh, Massachusetts Teachers Association. She participates in events here and uh, has expressed her interest to the chair to be a board member. Christy Livingston is the Associate uh, Executive Director of Haywood Commons and our bylaws provide specifically um, for the inclusion of folks as associate members that represent organizations serving the senior population. Christy has been very active here. Or, or, um, uh, her housing complex has been very engaged in events here, and typically when we are looking for resources, especially for our seniors, Christy has um, signed on. So I think this would be another great addition. Mr. Chair, the two uh, applications are included in the packet. If it is your, um, if it is your will, may we discuss and entertain motions on these two applications, either separately or independently? You want to do them independently? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go with the first one. That's for uh, Barbara LeBlanc. Is she here? Is she she no, no, no. We're just, she uh, wouldn't be seated till June. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, she's going to be Yes. Are not here today. Okay. 
entertain a motion to accept Barbara LeBlanc as a member, associate member. I'll make a motion to accept Barbara LeBlanc as an associate member. Any opposed? Second. That's it. I'm rushing. I second. I second. Okay. Any discussion on the nomination? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, so voted. Next person is Christy Livingston. Um, Michael has gone through the list, so do we have any discussion? Uh, well, we'll start off with uh, accepting, right? Entertain a motion to accept. Discussion on the on the, uh, on the uh, application person. Okay. All in favor? Any opposed? No. Okay. Beautiful. All set. Uh, It's at your, it's at your uh, will. Audrey has requested a medical leave, so um, she did check with Ron. She's checked in and asked for um, that leave. I think, and Ron might be able to tell you more, her expectation was that she would be mobile by now and has had some setbacks, but she did specifically reach out and ask for um, a medical leave. Continuation of her medical leave, yes. Are we at question time, or do we supposed to go forward? Um, we're, we're at question time for the election of officers yes, and nomination board. Yes, that's it. I have a question. With, with Pat Patricia leaving that position, is there somebody from that organization that's going to be moving into it? No? It's, a, it's a great question. The question by Kathy is whether or not um, Pat, by virtue of her position as president of AARP, has served on the board. Those positions as seated positions were eliminated. They don't exist anymore. So there is no designated seat on the Council of Aid on Aging for the AARP representative. And similarly, there is no designated seat on the Council on Aging for a Golden Age member. The two seats are now open to the general public. And part of our discussion and process of asking the City Council and Mayor to adopt that change in the Charter, which then, by the way, has to be adopted in our bylaws, but the reason for that is um, just by doing a census, the vast majority of us are on either or both of those organizations for members. And so we're able to represent them. Plus, we do allow for those representatives to come and uh, present. You know, if they want to, just ask the chair, we'll get them in on the agenda. So it's a very different relationship today with AARP and Golden Age than maybe it was 10 years ago. Yeah. So Gloria is still a member of the board, but she's not the titular representative of Golden Age. There is no such thing. She's a she's an appointed member of the board. Yep. 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 So those were all changed. Yeah. A couple months ago. Any other questions on? So, for clarification, Gloria is still a board member of the board. She is. Pat is still a member until, until recently. She that means held the position. Until correct. the end of this meeting. Right. Correct. That yes. Means, that means there's an opening for another voting member no. on the board? Yes, it does. Of oh, the yeah. voting but not yes. of the ARP. Correct. Yeah, no, I understand. It doesn't have to be ARP. Nope, nope. So there's one open position. Um, the way that that goes now, as of the, and we can't really consider that open position until the position is vacated. Now that it's vacated, if somebody is interested in becoming one of the seven appointed members by the, the mayor, two. Is it Evelyn also an absence here on the board? Evelyn was an associate member. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah. So if somebody's interested, they should see Ron or I, and then um, this board will vote to recommend, and then the mayor will uh, make the appointment, subject to the confirmation by the city council. 
So it's really kind of four steps to get um, to get uh, appointed as a permanent member. Can't talk you into it, though, Pat. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll add a little levity, Pat. Four more years. No, uh, uh, all right. Look for why, it. Why, uh, these are associate board. They are. Yeah. How do you become a real board member? You talk to the to the chair and to myself. Um, so we board. kind of go through that process. Remember, last year there was a vacancy, and that vacancy there were two members of the board that expressed interest. Um, then we had a presentation to the board, and uh, Paul was elected into that, was, was recommended for that, appointed by the mayor, confirmed by the city council. Yeah. And, and, now, and now you're regretting it. Well, yeah. Well, one of these, or one of the folks that have served a while. Yeah. So certainly Nancy, or Mary, or Paul, or Dan, or Stan, um, uh, would be you know, totally appropriate to have a conversation. Yeah. What pays? He promises oh. vacation. That's not what he says. Take money. All right. So we all sit on the uh, on the uh, of the members. So. so we now go to the next order of business: is the treasury report. Okay. The treasury report. It's included in your packet. It is for the time ending April 30. 23 and the first page the general fund is at the top and um, uh, we are almost to the end of the fiscal year and everything seems to be in order there uh, if you have any questions feel free to ask any question on the general fund has everybody found it in their packet is that what it i don't have gender And you're not on the right page. It's, it's the very first page of a report, and you're not on the right page. No, you're not. No, you're not. It's the first page. I know, but I think it's right up in the upper left-hand corner. It says general fund. General fund. That's not it. questions on the general fund and we should make it through to the end of the year which will be June, th uh, June 30th coming up and uh, Mike we think we've got enough money if any of these accounts should end up in the negative there will be um, uh, other funds to uh, uh, clear them up the state in the past we would always keep making transfers as we went along. But the state prefers that you make one transfer at the end of the period, a fiscal period, and clear them all up and balance out, right? Yes, um, and, and that's, there's also a little other nuance. Within the salary accounts or the employee accounts, we can, um, we can make line transfers, line item transfers, and within the operating part of our budget, we can do it. But we can't move money from the operating into salaries, for example. That's specifically prohibited. We're going to have, I think, a surplus at the end of the year because the maintenance position has been open for so long. Even though we did have the termination pay that offset some of that free money. Um, so I, I don't really see any issues there. And even on the, the uh, operating side, there's already a negative that's posted. Thank you, Nancy. Folks, Nancy Costa, our admin, say hi. Hi. Um, there is one uh, deficit account, which is office supplies. We'll just we'll take money from one of the other accounts that have a surplus of balance. Yeah, yeah. So we usually end up in the black at the end of the year. We will again. It certainly looks as though we will. And then at the bottom of that page is our gift fund, and that's in good condition. Uh, as you know, we don't. Uh, spend any money at the time of that gift fund. We're hoping when we get to our new quarters, we'll be able to invest it in something. We had, we did receive a few donations, which are in the April, April 2023 column. And so we're ending up now, our, our gift fund account keeps growing little by little. We got 65,536.4 in the gift account. Rock, 
Mike wants to go to Aruba. Should I let him go? <laughs> <laughs> the, gift, the gift account is the only account, by the way, that uh, I don't have direct purview over. Any expenses from the gift account have to be voted on by and authorized by this board. Um, nobody else has the ability to spend this money. So even me? Huh? Yeah, yeah, not even. Um, well, then you can't go to a room. We fix it. And we have been putting uh, donations that might otherwise go to programs into the donation, uh, the gift fund because we have enough resources to cover those programs right now. But as we start to really aggressively do the build out for Waterford, we're gonna to need to tap some of these, these funds. Okay, and on page two, another big long page, that is the revolving fund. And everything there uh, seems to be in very good order. There was just one item that I, out there towards the top handwords. $2,310.25. That, uh, that, well, nine, 900, I'm, I'm sorry, for April it was 926.03. And that was used to fill the Easter baskets that were given out as a drive a drive through. So that was only the only big expense there, Amazon, of course. And other than that, uh, you, unless you see something you'd like to ask about on that, on the revolving fund, everything seems to be in order. Yep, just a quick comment since you brought up the um, the Easter basket. I want to thank Quabbin Valley Healthcare for all they did, and AARP for those of you who got the um, the Easter basket. You saw our nice uh, addition to that Easter basket this year with the chocolates, with a nice little sticker on there that reminded us uh, of the service organizations and and. Um, and social organizations here at the, the Senior Center. So, so appreciative of AARP and all you do, and Golden Age and all you do. Thank you so much for being such heavy hitters. Okay, and the next page is the FY21 state grant, and that is closed out. Uh, finally, yes, um, and it's definitely closed out. I wanted to ask Mike, and I forgot to, do we have to make a a report to the state, I uh, no, we don't, that's good. Okay, so that's done. And now we're on the FY22 uh, grant, and um, we've been spending money out of there, and that is almost closed out. There's only a balance of $580.70 left. And Mike has been making a real good effort to get that one closed out. Uh, if there are any questions there on any of these items, I mean, FY22. And just for your information, in um, May, so today, we processed $500 in um, instructor costs against this. So we really have a balance as of today of $80.70. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's it. I think, yeah, we, if we had $80 left, we could carry it over. I'm really trying to allocate yeah. any expenses that are incurred this year to the FY22 so we can close it out and only have the FY23 and FY24 grants open. Okay, and the next page is the FY23 uh, grant. And again, that is in very good condition. At the top, you could see the beginning balance and the increase that we were given. And uh, not too much was spent out of that in April. Some money for instructors and for a little uh, uh, extra work, and so we have forty-seven thousand oh sixty-eight thirty in the FY twenty-three grant, and that's the one now that Mike will be concentrating on. Is he uses up some of that before we get to FY twenty-four? And the last page is kind of a consolidated report. Up at the top, you can see the carryover. 2021 zeroed out, carry over 2022, 580.70, and then the 23 beginning and the 23 increase, and the total revenues, 47,649. And then in April, a few um, a few expenses out, and um, in um, 47,649 uh, in there. So. Uh, we are in very good shape. The last page, of course, is the summary. And uh, if you have any questions, now's the time. We have Michael here. He can answer some more than me. But anyway, any questions? No. No questions. No questions. No questions, Mr. President.
Okay, I entertain a motion to accept. No, no. I entertain a motion. Okay, I have a motion. No, entertain a motion. Any motion. Any motion you want to make. Something for the second? Okay, all the second. All right. Uh, all in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? No? Okay. So it's up. Okay, next thing on our agenda, I believe, would be new business. Um, old old, old business first. Yeah. And uh, we just had our meeting with the uh, age friendly designation. So that was what I have on my sheet here for. Uh, all business and uh, then we're going to do a little update on the Waterford Street School. So let's do old business first. Um, okay. Age friendly designation. Um, I guess I, I guess I'm, I'm just going to ask. I I think it's a I personally think it's a good idea. Um, the staff will drive this process, but clearly the board has to be behind this, which is why I come to you and ask for your endorsement of seeking out the age-friendly designation. I think at the end of the day, personally, I think it's going to benefit our senior community. Uh, even if there's only one or two things that we identify as being uh, doable and action-oriented, that's one or two things that we can do. Uh, but I imagine it's going to be much broader than that. I've had the opportunity to serve on like the health needs assessment group, strategic planning for the chamber, our business, um, uh, and marketing plan and have seen remarkable results. I'm, I'm kind of excited about the, the process more than the outcomes. It's just being able to engage more people from the community at very high level discussions about what the needs of our senior community are and how can we start to work with municipal government, private foundations and organizations to make those things come to fruition. So with your with your indulgence, I would ask you to consider um, us moving forward with the age-friendly designation. With the uh, recommendations that we would make, but I would carry as much weight as if we had been with them. I, I think the answer is no. Um, so the, the question is, would recommendations we make in the future have as much um, as, as much weight or strength than recommendations made with the study? Having worked in community development, having worked on many, many grants and, um, and organizations applying for grants, we know when there's a documented process that identifies a need, it's much easier to get that money um, to ask for those grants and get approved for those grants when there's an inclusive process, rather than kind of what seemingly is pulling something out of the air or might be a knee-jerk reaction. So strategic planning, having that documented, always gives us a leg up on getting funding or maybe not funding but being able to advocate for support of a particular project that might just mean um, you know getting people on board so yeah Paul, I, I think I think history um, has been a, has given us a proven track record that doing these types of processes makes us stronger at the end to get additional resources whether that's money or, or public buy-in whatever that is what would be the initial? What would be the initial uh, motion that we would look to make today to just to get know that the COA is in favor of beginning the process? Or what would be our initial motion that we should make? Um, so the action could be to um, to support the city's application for age friendly designation or to table it. And we don't have to do it today. We can do it in six months, a year, or six years from now. But I would, I would imagine the, the action today, if we were to decide to support this, would be to take a vote to support the City of Gardner's age-friendly designation application. And then they would file the application, correct? Well, well, no, we would be filing. Oh, we yeah, we, would, we would be doing it. Yeah, so once, once this board, the process I imagine will be, not imagine, this is the process that's been laid out for us. If we endorse it, then we would send a recommendation um, to the mayor to support it and to the city council to support it. So that would uh, likely go before the welfare committee. We would do a presentation before the welfare committee, maybe if they, they are so inclined to do that, or they might just accept the recommendation on the council on aging to do it. 
and then they would move it forward to the full council for support. Um, I've had the opportunity to see our, our city council in action. It's very unlikely, from my perspective, and I may be totally reading this wrong, so don't hold me to it, that they would, that they would not support the council on aging's recommendation to get a trend designation. They would not? They, they would not not support it. Oh, they would, not yeah, not. they would not reject it. Did They're I say would not support not. it? Yes. Yes. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that they would reject that oh, idea. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they've been very, very engaged with the center and supportive of our initiatives. So the process is basically the vote of the city council. That's going to take some time. Yep. Um, my question is, is that once we get approval, and they, they go through the process, during the last meeting with Antoine, he was saying that the first two years is the planning stage and development stage and assessment and all of that. How much of a burden, or if there would be a burden, on the staff here? That's a great question, and thank you, by the way, for being I'm only saying because we're moving yeah. and we've yeah. got a lot on our plate. No, I, I will tell you, uh, my thought of this process is it will have absolutely zero or very little impact on the staff, because both the chair and vice chair have agreed to take this under their wings and Look at Paul. Paul just was like, I resigned. Uh, no, no, it, go it's going to it's gonna have an impact, folks. Let's, let's be real, right? It's going to have an impact. So, um, you know, not in preparation for, but now, after the fact, um, members of the board engaged in listening sessions. Well, we're going to have to continue those listening sessions. Did it have an impact on staff? Yeah, because we attended and we heard. And, by the way, we moved the needle on many of those issues that were that were presented there. But our focus then was very narrow. Our focus of those listening sessions was just how can the Council on Aging be more effective or what kind of programs can we do for you or what would it take to get you to be engaged. This will be a much bigger, higher level, broader uh, discussion with members of the community. So it will have an impact. If I thought it would be overly detrimental, I probably wouldn't be pushing it. Um, I think one of the beautiful things is Antron, in his presentation earlier, laid out a, a five-year plan, but we don't have to absolutely have to stick to that. If our planning phase took three years, we wouldn't get penalized for that. If the ultimate outcome was seven years, there's no um, hard and fast commitment. They won't hold our feet to the fire, nor will we lose any resources if the process is a longer duration process than what was laid out. I'll probably have a question. Yeah, I, no, I just said uh, I'd volunteer help. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yeah, we will. I mean, I think one of the things, if you vote for this, you are also going to be, um, you, you are also voting for your own commitment to the process, whatever that looks like. So, you know, board members, you've done a great job in the last two years. You really have been engaged in so many of our functions and the listening sessions. We had so many of our board members involved in that that really took the matters into their hands after the fact. And so we're looking for that engagement as well. So if we vote this, yeah, you'll be signing on the dotted line as well as the staff. But I think you could do it. I wouldn't ask you to do something I didn't think you were capable of doing. I wouldn't do it. No, when we had the listening session, we found out some of the information that Antoine mentioned about transportation. We found out where our deficits were. You know, trying to get people like from the Banal House and a few other places to get here. So that was all in this little packet. You know, this is all work for us also. Uh, one other question that I mentioned was going to be, uh, if we sign on on this, can we get everything in place to get started, but then hold off until we move? Yep. Yeah, I again, we can... Yeah. I agree yeah. with that, and I'm almost thinking to wait the other way, because we're getting closer and closer to that point where we are getting closer and closer to opening the new building that we throw something that in that might be just another big thing to handle right now for a lot of people. We might be better off waiting until we're in the building and say, okay, because we may find we need, we need different things or more things than you know, whether it's soccer or anything. You know, the coach, I think to get yeah. the ahead of time, get everything ready, then Bingo will stop and get to a new place. Yeah. One, one of the things I would just, I would offer, um, I think the opening will springboard this. Um, so I, by, by engaging in the designation now, when we open it, it will give us more opportunity to engage people, as opposed to it being a detriment. Um, 
that the new opening is going to allow us to engage more people in this process, which is why I think the timing now is very good. But that's just, again, my, my opinion. Paul Leone had a question, then Terry. No, I, okay. I, I think that we should at least start today with the idea of having a public meeting to because this is election year, the mayor may be changing. I think it's important that we at least say today, hey, we support, and then the, the letter can go forth to the mayor, and then to the city council. Those steps are going to take a while. It's not like we're going to be rushed, and it will still, so by the time that we move and we're down there, then we can say, hey, we're ready to add that program on too. So I would make a motion that the board today support the uh, Gardner uh, age-friendly community and we allow our, are you the COA? The COA to communicate the fact to the mayor that we, the COA board, approve going forward. That's my motion. Uh, okay, motion was made. Can we have a second on that? Second. I'll make a second on that. Okay. Let's have a discussion. What was going on? On the motion. On the motion. Now it's not just a kind of hypothetical, but a discussion on the motion. So. I think we should make a motion, and, and so it, it doesn't commit us to a lot, but at least it starts the process, and we can go forward. Like I said, this is election year. We need to strike all the people that support us that are in office. <laughs> but and also, um, and all, uh, people that support us are in office, and also, um, it, it's just our beginning step, and I think we should do it today rather than keeping it going forward on the agenda. I think we should, and since uh, Mr. Ellis isn't worried about manpower or anything, so I think that that's the first step. All we're doing at this point is we're telling Mr. Ellis, yes, we're in favor, go forth. One last thing I'll just say from a very, well, not selfish, um, but more, uh, again, broad perspective. As we move into the new location, we're going to be asking for support. And I think it's, at every step that we increase our engagement, it allows more people to come in and see what we do, and it makes it easier to make that case. I also want to just say that I totally respect uh, Kathy's position, and I'd give her a hug for looking after our staff, um, because I always worry about overcommitting, um, you know, folks, staff. But I, I think we're going to be all right. And again, we can delay it a little bit if we need to, right? To sort of set up the process. I, I would like to add, um, I entertain the motion that we're sending that message to the city council, okay? And um, I lost my train of thought. Oh my God. You know, I had a senior mom. Um, no, I. I just want to make sure that when we present this to the city council, because there will be a time when we will have to present this, that we bring up the right resources, such as like Antoine. Um, this, they may not go in age from the community. It's um, basically so that there's no, um, that we're covering all our bases, if you will. So they have a full understanding of what this involves. So that's, yeah. I'll entertain the motion and, and just make sure we just cover ourselves on it. Start, and that's all. Right. And the next step will be the mayor. And right, absolutely. Right. It's, it's a long process. It's not going to happen. But I think we need to start. Yeah. 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 So any, any more discussion on the motion? Okay. Uh, yes, not hearing anything, so how about all in favor? things came to mind and I had the luxury of working with IT and they are totally spearheading this on access points and the city is developing access points throughout the city so that folks have access in their neighborhoods to high-speed internet and, and bus shelters we're working with Mark I mean we are one of the lead agencies 
along with the mayor's office, who's been incredible to work with, in identifying and placing bus shelters throughout the city. Like, we don't have a lot of those. Um, Mark has committed to doing 10 or more in Gardner. Now, just to kind of give you an idea, uh, we put one up at, at Haywood Hospital seven, eight years ago. The cost of that was about $9,000 for the shelter. Those shelter costs have increased substantially, and that doesn't include the, include the preparation, the concrete pad, and the installation. So um, that's a huge investment by Mark to make sure that our, our riders, especially our senior riders, have an, a safe, weatherproof place to sit um, while waiting for the buses. And that's the first step of, of enhancing our transportation. So a lot of stuff, and I think that's one of the important things that was said, is a lot of things may be being done, but do we have a very specific voice as a senior community in some of those things? Like the park that's going down on Main Street. How might we enhance that to be more senior friendly? So those are just, I think, great, to, um, or, you know, handicap park and a monument park. Um, when we have the concerts, finding parking there is tough. And a lot of our seniors have to walk great distances because it's the only available parking. So how can we have a voice in those improvements to make sure that our senior community is um, involved? So thank you, by the way, for your voter support and encouragement. I look, I really look forward to this. I think it's going to be exciting. How many uh, bus shelters do we have in the city now? I have no idea. Not a lot. There's one behind the post office. Yep, behind the post office. Yep. Yeah. 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 And the one on Prospect is new. That's a, that's a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Very well. So we go to the next order of business as the update. So on Water Street. So this is the um, the time where a lot is happening, but there doesn't seem to be a lot. Um, I want to again just offer my uh, just words of recognition and encouragement to those folks that have been really spearheading it. Um, you know, John Zlotnick, I swear to God, he has another office now at Waterford Street. He's down there all the time. He's meeting with contractors, getting specs um, created so that we can bid out the work. Meeting with uh, folks that are doing some site development things, working with you know all the different entities involved in getting our organizations in there, and of course. The mayor and Colin just remarkably um, uh, up to their up to their elbows in you know getting this work done. But we are now at that moment where it doesn't seem like anything's happening, but a lot is being done in the background. And as soon as that stuff is done, we'll be able to bid and have contractors in there doing the work. Um, in in anticipation of our moving, though, we've had a lot of folks from the community step forward with some support, and I want to just uh, make. Particular mention to uh, the family of, of Teresa McKean, who has donated some really remarkable pieces for the center to make it a little bit more homely and less institutional looking, moving away from that idea of, a, of an old concrete school to something warm and inviting. So thank you to the family for doing that, as well as so many other folks from the community that are stepping up uh, and helping. So that's really not a lot to be talking about at Waterford. If you've gone down, you've seen some things done. A concrete pad was placed for the coolers, for the CAC and growing places. Work is being done in the back uh, for gamma. Um, measurements and scope of works have been done for drop ceilings and the heat splits uh, on our side. So mm -hmm. this is the sit and wait period, and uh, but but no, a lot's being done. Kind of, um, some members come and ask me about the possibility checking into having personal lockers available for the yoga area for their equipment that you know would be perhaps 30 lockers. I don't know if there's some available in the system somewhere. Yeah, we've, we've already put our mark on those. Um, there are a number of old lockers that really aren't aren't worth saving. Um, but there are a number of really new lockers at the beginning, at the front, at the beginning, at the main entrance of Waterford Street School. We've asked to be able to utilize those, and by utilize, move them out of that main hallway into the area where our fitness class is going to be. That's our hope. Um, it's not a it's not a heavy lift. It wouldn't be really difficult to do. Take a little bit of elbow grease and some work, but not a lot of money to reuse those. They're in great shape. That's our plan. Plans change. There are a lot of things that could happen between now and November or October, September, August, January. Um, 
you know, at, even while we're in there, things could change. That's the, the point is, um, you know, we have to be fluid. But yeah, absolutely, we've already earmarked those and asked uh, to have those. Yep. So our cabinet is over here coming with us? Yeah, we're taking everything that can move is coming with us. So um, the cabinet's here. We'll go into one of the rooms, the hallway cabinet. We're planning on doing in our office the same setup that we have at Waterford Street, the same setup we have here, which will include a uh, fixed window for observation onto the, the main entrance of the senior center, then a service window in the corridor to allow for folks to step up and do those kinds of things, like update their uh, information or, or make reservations, those kinds of things. So uh, that's our plan. That will take a little bit of, of more uh, you know, skill and yeah, and effort. Uh, that that will be a big one, but that's our plan. And then right across, we'll put the lockers. Say it. Yeah. So the security cameras were going a lot of different ways. Most recently, I had the opportunity to talk with uh, Bob O'Keefe. Bob has been again very proactive in this regard. So he's looked at systems that have been installed at the elementary school, the police station, and other city entities. He's looking at systems for us. Right now, we have a, we have a security system in place. Um, it's, it's a little old, but still works. And we have asked to have that as well. Now, I, again, thank you for that. I, I fret at night, um, worry about the security of the building, but thankfully we have you know, the ability to keep tabs on that with our existing system. And um, I think the folks that are working on the build out know that that is a priority for us. So um, security, security and surveillance. And surveillance, that sends a um, kind of wrong message. We don't really want to be monitoring what people are doing in the senior center. But right now our security and surveillance allows us to see every room. So if there is a major incident, i.e. a medical condition, um, we're able to see that. As you all know, we've had 13 critical incidents on our front stairs. We're able to target, we sit in our office, we're not in the staircase all day. We're able to see where that accident occurred and be able to respond quickly because of the surveillance and security system. Um, that case has not been, um, you know, has not fallen on deaf ears. So they recognize the importance of that for us, especially as our footprint expands dramatically and our ability to see and be in places uh, remote places of the senior center will be more difficult. Yep. So thank you for bringing that up, uh, but know that it is certainly on our list of priority projects. And spotlights are still going to stay around the building all the time. There are spotlights out there. Those, as part of the security and surveillance system enhancements, will also be looked at and additional lighting put in. We hope. But remember, we are looking at a, a build out a long-term build-up that includes, you know, maybe painting rooms, renovating rooms once a year over the course of the next five years. What those, what happens with those issues is really going to depend on budget and what, what we have for money. And there's a, I mean, there's a lot going into it. We've gotten bids already for moving. We've gotten bids for, um, you know, taking apart the cabinets, bringing those in. So, the, you know, the big stuff, um, moving the pool tables. You know, we have all those costs and you know probably collectively we're looking at about I don't know right now thirty thirty five thousand dollars in expenses just to move our stuff from here there with no improvements so. any other questions about Watford Street awesome and we move from the bylaws um, Yes, old business. Oh, old, old, old business. Yeah. Um, yeah. It wasn't listed on the agenda, but just a mem uh, item that has been on uh, old business and tabled are our bylaw revisions. Now that the city charter has been updated, removing those positions, we need to update our bylaws. Um, our bylaws also call for very specific location of the council on aging as being at 294 Pleasant Street. That's going to change. So those things we should be proactive in. Um, and creating the change of bylaws. So I've asked for some volunteers, and we put it on the back burner because it wasn't really important, but it is much more important now. Um, so I'm just looking for two or three people from the board to sit and muddle through making the changes to the bylaws 
Many of those changes, by the way, we've already talked about and have highlighted in the copy of the bylaws that you've received at previous meetings. So it's just a matter of you know spending a little bit of time scrutinizing those, seeing if they are you know worthy of making the amendments or changes to, and bringing those recommendations to this board for amendment. So um, hopefully, uh, Mr. Chair, we can get a couple people by the end of this meeting to volunteer to do that task. I'm volunteering. All right. And I'll, I'll volunteer. I'll volunteer if Terry doesn't volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> so Terry, Terry, Paul, Paul. I mean, Terry, Paul, Paul. Okay. Anybody um, else? Good. You'll have copies of those recommendations on yep. my list. I'm trying to figure out where I place mine. I know I probably have it someplace. Yeah. And yeah. What's, yeah. And when are you thinking about meeting? It would be nice to get this done and have it done by the June meeting. So I can't really see this being more than a couple hour meeting. We'll okay. order some lunch and, right. and make it a working meeting. Piece of cake. Right. Take the lunch <laughs> Now, now Paul and I are definitely out. Yeah, we're all right. <laughs> yeah, I have a whole bunch of them. So we're now going to go to the director's report. I'm going to just rattle through a whole bunch of programs for your benefit that are coming up. Um, this Wednesday, we have our derby party. We have over 50 people signed up, which is more than twice we had last year. Word got out that it was a lot more fun than what people were expecting because they didn't know what to expect. So we hope um, we get a uh, crazy crowd. On May 24th, Quabbin Valley Healthcare is doing a presentation on the status of health of older Americans which, by the way, will really roll in nicely to our strategic plan, right? Getting some of that information, becoming acclimated on some of the physical, mental health, financial, spiritual uh, health issues of our seniors. On May 31st, Sean Fullerton is coming uh, to do a concert. On June 14th, we're doing Flag Day, which will be in part sponsored by the Golden Age Club. Um, I don't know that we'll have a million people, but we'll talk about that after. And uh, I'm really appreciative of the Golden Age Club stepping up and sponsoring the ice cream social after that event. On June 28th, um, Mark Erin is coming to do a, pre a program for our volunteers that served the Senior Center last year. Um, we kept putting it off. We had it uh, originally scheduled for the fall and then spring. We are good to go on June 28th at the PACC. That will be a full house. We have lots of good and new programs, the Riders Club, the Book Club, um, working on a Tai Chi instructor on May 12th. Judge Goldstein is hosting a tour um, and presentation on the Discovering Justice at the Gardner District Court, so folks are invited to come to that. You do have to RSVP ahead of time. Um, the program is scheduled from 8.45 to 12, and we'll probably do a lunch after, a box lunch, like we have for other programs. On June 9th, uh, Attorney Gina Wilson is coming back and doing our legal considerations for seniors program, which has always been a very well-attended um, program. On July 1st, we have our shredding event in partnership with AARP and the Gardner Board of Health, as well as E.L. Harvey. That's a free shredding uh, event for anybody in the city. There is no limit, honest to God. We've had those calls this week. I bet you we had three calls from folks asking whether or not there was any maximum amount. We said, pull your truck up, we'll shred it. Um, so as long as there's room in the truck, last year we did about Two, a little over two tons of, um, of paper. On June 21st, we have Mike Festa coming. Mike Festa is the Massachusetts Director of AARP to do our annual meeting with AARP. On June 23rd, the Mount has uh, offered, invited us to do a tour of Mount Massachusetts Community College, which last year we had eight folks attend. It was actually really good. I want to thank Rhonda Patez for really pulling the group together, nice presentations, and as we were going through Theater of the Mount, the president of the college came down and met us and, and spoke with us for about 20 minutes, which was, I think, exceptional. Um, we have three vet trips scheduled for this summer and early fall. We're going to Castle Island, um, we're going to Battleship Cove and Fall River, and we're going to Cathedral of Pines in the fall. That's open to veterans and their spouses only, so not open to other family members. Um, just got done with a great mass health program. We had about uh, eight or ten people over the course of two hours stop in 
and talk about mass health redetermination and eligibility. At the same time, we did a wound center program provided by the Haywood Center for Wound Care, Carol Naomi and her crew. So very appreciative of that. We are scheduled for our October 4th health fair uh, at Waterford Street School again this year, which will be a awesome, awesome program. Last year we had 113 vendors, 127 reserved, um, and we had about 230 vendor volunteers there and about 300 people from the community. So we had about 500 folks that went through every booth. They were very excited, uh, put out a lot of, uh, of collateral materials. Let's hope it doesn't rain. Yeah, oh yeah, honest to God, that is. That, that is a field. Yeah, but I think if it does, we'll probably look at doing this as an August event moving forward. We have our summer outing coming up. Um, in July, hopefully at Templeton Fish and Gun. We haven't confirmed that, so we haven't put anything out about it yet. Um, we are sponsoring a pumpkin carving contest for September, October of this year. And in November, December, we're going to sponsor a gingerbread house contest. So on both of those, we've already had the opportunity to speak to a number of folks from the community that represent places like Haywood Commons and uh, Garden Rehab, the Highlands, they're all in, which will be nice, because then at least we'll have 10 or 12 entries, if not from the community, and I think we'll get a lot more from the community. And last but not least, um, the uh, Central Mass, not Central Mass, the Care Central VNA has asked to do a standing program every month. Last month they did it on balance and, um, you know, kind of protecting your bones. This month it's on aging your skin, that is indicative, I think, of this rising tide. A lot of folks are seeing, because of your work, support, engagement, we're seeing more stuff happening here. Um, and because more stuff is happening here, we're getting more support. The more support we get means more engagement. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's our job, right? Our job is to get seniors involved by finding the programs that are of interest and impact on them. Uh, I really appreciate, uh, you know, Ron and I talk about it all the time, we really appreciate the hard work and heavy lift you do. Those little things are what makes the difference. Those little things are what changes the aspect here at the Gardner Senior Center. And for all of those little things and big things you do, thank you so much. Um, that's all I have. I have rattled through that pretty quick. Did you get it all, Kat? I got it all. It's all right. <laughs> okay, so we'll go with the uh, director's report, yep. the summer schedule. So, uh, Next thing is going to be open discussion. Yep. Yep. Anybody, anybody have? Yeah. Okay, since so there's nothing on the open discussion, uh, do I? Before we do, I just, if I can, um, if, if you will, um, if you will entertain this, I do want to just. Um, Introduce two friends that are sitting in the audience from AARP. Uh, Marcel Cormier. Marcel does our legislative stuff for AARP, which is immeasurably valuable to our senior uh, community, right? So all of those things that the, the state house um, or the Senate are taking up, or on the national level, the Congress is taking up, impact us on a daily basis. So thank you for spearheading what I think is a pretty heavy lift. But you, you're doing it, you know, amazing job, especially at our last meeting. Thank you. And Brenda Crump. Brenda is our secretary of AARP and just does a remarkable job, um, you know, doing all the things that secretaries need to do, which is reminding us of events and programs and supporting us in so many ways. So her level of engagement has ratcheted up a hundredfold. And because of that, we've gotten you know, much more insight as to what's happening in many more programs. So to our friends and colleagues at AARP, Thank you for all you do for our senior center, but certainly for our community, our senior community. I just want to make sure we can say hello. I would have thought of it, I never did. I just saw them sitting here from the earlier meeting and just be, oh, they just come and see what's going on. Right here, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sarah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Great job with Dunkin' Donuts, right? Yep. So well, Brenda does. Do you have a basket? No. No. I have a question. Brenda, you want to help No, that's not <laughs> By the way, this is all video, so I don't want to look like the secretary that's sitting here doing nothing. It's a duet later. I just don't want to play it again. So, may I have the making a motion to adjourn? Second.
All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And our next meeting will be on Monday, June the 5th at 2 p.m. Wow, this is exciting.